All right, hello and welcome everybody to the Off-Sea High School League of Legends Provincial Championships. Nice change of pace here. We got some awesome matches up, an entire day's worth of action here, and definitely going to be looking forward to it. My name's Dan Banner, also known as Mr. Danner's Joint, alongside Kaylee Jappy here for hello. this first game. Are you excited for this one? I am beyond excited because we're finally getting uh, high schools involved in the esports industry, and it... It makes my heart all warm and toasty for everything that's gonna that we're gonna see today. So far, we are already we actually already started with the pro draft phase. We have two different schools here. We have or sorry, two different teams. We have the Falcons and then we have the HTTT One teams. So for th for the bands for the Falcons, we have Akshan, Zeri, and Sejuani. Some good picks. They are pretty good in the meta still. And then for the HTT One side, we have Kled, Vane, and Hecarim. Yeah. So. It's going to be an interesting mix here, of course. Uh, yes. um, HTTT1, first off, I like the play on the, the <laughs> SKT1 I love it as from, well. the, uh, from the professional side of things. You know, they're on the Falcons. I mean, we haven't quite seen it just yet, but the, both these teams, their logo game has been on point. So oh, yeah. Their logos are fantastic. I love them so much. It's interesting to say the least. Now, of course, HTTT1, they're out of Holy Trinity. Meanwhile, the side of the Falcons is out of uh, Toronto... Toronto District, Toronto Catholic, or, or I Christian? I believe Toronto so? Christian, that's yes. what it is. So, getting started off, and this is, there we go. This is one thing I was going to be really excited about for the high school side <gasps> of things, because we, we do not necessarily them. get the stick to meta picks. A lot of times, a lot oh of the players God. here, like, okay, you can try and practice a meta comp, but what about that composition that you've just been so used to running like the yeah. kind of champions and this does allow for some off picks and renata glask this is going to be the first time that i get to see this character in like tournament action which yes. is interesting i'm i can't remember how long ago she was allowed back in the um leagues but i'm really really excited to see it that's a really good point to make though because normally with the college and varsity teams that we do have we always ha go by the meta strongest picks equal easier wins in all honesty yeah, like um, the top 20, like, best characters yeah, this yeah. time. It's usually a mixed match between those, right? Exactly. So we, I'm I'm ecstatic to see everything today. So for, for the Falcon side, we have Ari, Lucian, and Nami. Lucian and Nami, just, it's, like, yeah. one of the most broken ball lanes right now. It's so, like, it's insane the amount of damage you can do with just Nami bringing Electrocute, her putting her... Um, What's it called? The enhanced auto attacks yeah. onto Lucian, and he just goes in, and you get one shot. But even in Collegiate, like honestly, right now, looking at the way this draft is forming up, like HTT one here is going off of what looks like a void theme. Yes, <laughs> like, like, I if, know. If we were actually <laughs> going to have like specific themed compositions, they are right on point there with the Rexide, Chogath, and the Renata Glask. But now, mm -hmm. meanwhile, looking at the side of Falcons. We were talking about, like, you can stray away from the meta, but this feels like a very meta yes, composition right that, now. It Nami is. Lucian is just, like you said, such a fantastic pairing. Mm -hmm. Ari, extremely good spot right now for that character. So much uh, yeah. damage while still being so safe. I'm not sure if they nerfed her with the patch that literally came out two days ago, mm -hmm. but they could have. And for HTTT one side, maybe they're just playing some TFT. They saw the mutant buff this game or this <laughs> match, and that's what they want to go for. <laughs> Do you, you get never the theme buff from TFT? Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Um, it actually looks like Falcons skipped out on a ban. We're not sure if that was a mistake or not. We'll that probably... could also be a pro drive glitch too. So yeah, we'll probably get some info on the last ban there. But they did end up banning Twitch, and then for HT, they banned Kane and Camille, which honestly is very interesting. Seeing all the different bans and the different picks, it's really weird to me now. Mm. But I'm really excited. And then, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, Holy Trinity, going to break the Void theme. We're going to pick up the Ezreal this time by. Just yes. very safe AD carry. Mm -hmm. And if they realize, oh, no, I'm going up against Lucianami, okay, I need something that can get out of dodge if need be. So fair enough there. Mm -hmm. And now the Lilia pick coming out here from the side of Toronto. Lilia, I'm not too sure how she... Lilia is that one weird champion that, like, is... Like, a couple of champions are like this where they are very strong right now, but nobody knows how to utilize it to its full potential. So I'm really interested to see how they play. And then we also have the Darius pick. Seeing Darius is a classic for St. Clair. Oh, so yes, I'm absolutely. very excited. I'm sure Ricky, back at home, if he <laughs> is watching, he's going to be very, very happy about that. Absolutely. And then we're just waiting on the last pick for HT. Do you got to have any guesses? Right now, it looks like they're picking their mid lane. I'm trying to think. We need a, a mid lane. Uh, can we get a Valkaz? You mean a Malzahar? 
Or Arm Rouse Heart, too. That can work. Yeah. <laughs> Either or just give us one of our other Void Darlings of sorts. Nope, we're just doing a Trindamir. Trindamir. Interesting. Okay, so compositions have been revealed. Now, if I were to make predictions based strictly off of the, uh, the compositions at hand, mm-hmm. it looks good for Falcons. However, yes. it's an absolutely like open bag of worms here it today because of... Uh, unpredictability with these players exactly one thing that the cameras are finally on i'm proud to be wearing my jinx but there's no jinx i know there's no jinx but i wish she's here like both on my shirt and in my heart okay always of course. <laughs> that's the that's the only thing that matters but yes um for the team comps i do feel like falcons do have the advantage right now they have some very the very strong pick picks is, the trin pick is cast by the way and oh. it looks oh. like okay hmm. or Wait a second. Cast as in Cassiopeia or Cassadin? Okay, oh, there we go. So, so the Trindamir was just an instant uh, panic lock-in, but they meant to do something else, hey, and it was meant to be a Cassiopeia. So yes. not quite a Voidling. However, a crazy creature in her own right, carry mm-hmm. potential in that mid lane, would be absolutely scary to deal with. So. Oh, yeah. Depending on who... Um, going up against Ari, that would definitely be interesting. You just have to make sure that the... The Ari just has to make sure that she can use her ultimate dashes in the best way possible to avoid the Cassiopeia stun ultimate. Right, because you can't necessarily turn around. Now, of course, those yes. unaware... Um, the big ability there for Cassiopeia being the, uh, the petrifying gaze. Basically, think of Medusa. If you're staring, yes. staring at her, you will be frozen. You'll be turned into stone, basically. Yeah. However, turn your back you're safe however if you're with ari being such a dash oriented character if you're dashing directly at her instantly pop at the stone uh petrine gaze mm-hmm. you have no way to dodge it so like yeah that, that can be very troublesome for the fellow mid laner not to mention all the movement speed that ari has with i believe it's on her w now it's yeah it is on her w now so whenever ari does proc that she is able to get a small bit of movement speed and run a little bit faster so she might be able to just use that in order to dodge the ulti but and we don't know dodge I'm, pedals. yeah exactly i'm really really excited to see what uh comes up who so you said you have your bets on falcons this game based strictly off of the composition that yes. i see however the other thing about this uh this tournament in general is it's all best of ones so you can yeah. throw some like wrenches into the gears so to speak try something crazy you can get away with it there's no time to adapt you win because right now we're in the round robin stage so we're going to be playing mm-hmm. like three games this morning each team gets a bunch of games of course yep. before we get into the playoff stage with the quarterfinals and whatnot but if you're going to try something crazy, now's the time to do it. Exactly. One thing that I will say about the HT team, though, is that they have a Cho'Gath. If that Cho'Gath Cho. gets enough stacks, and if he is able to get as much health as he does late game, then Falcons might be in for a little bit of trouble. Because taking down a very late, like a Cho'Gath in when you're like 30, almost 40 minutes in, it's a pain. <laughs> However, the reverse can absolutely be true, though, if yes. they just focus him down. Don't let him build those stacks. And for somebody who's supposed to be a main tank, they'll be just a tiny little voidling, like nothing that they can actually do, right? Yeah, exactly. And another point that I wanted to make for the HT team, they also have Renata. So think of it this way. Lucian's probably going to get so fed to the point where he's just going to one-shot everybody. But the second Renata gets her ult, Nami's just going to go poof. There's not going to be a Nami anymore. No, absolutely. Because if I recall correctly, it's like, change of heart of sorts right like you just kind of take them over or how does that yeah. does that work so the way that renata's alt works it's a very wide um almost like a wave okay and if any um so if someone hit both of us and me and you were allies i just start attacking you <laughs> and me being the adc main that i am that would that would hurt yeah <laughs> if you're not a tank that's the thing with renata i feel like you mainly have to pit a uh, tank into her so then you can if that does happen you can survive or if you Which pick an enchanter enough. like Nami, you have a very, very small chance of surviving it, depending on how fed your ADC is. That will definitely be intriguing the longer yes. this one goes on at that post level six sections. But real quick, I do want to take a look and see some of the players themselves mm-hmm. that we do actually have here in the game itself. They're, um, I'll give a obviously credit they all the coaches just giving us as much information on these players as possible i know in the collegiate side of things yes. it feels like we're going in kind of blind sometimes with <laughs> some of these players and this time not quite the case so for the side of the falcons up on the top lane we do have 
uh, Callum, uh, Chris, or uh, Chris Holm, currently in twelfth grade. Yes. And it's going to be interesting seeing what happens moving forward there. Of course, from uh, high school off to college or university, mm-hmm. possibly. Then we have uh, in the jungle. We have please quit. It's going to be Daniel Mann, also in grade twelve. Apparently, love sushi. I love that username. <laughs> Just please quit. I mean. Or as we go through the rest of this team yeah, here, this, this is like the three <laughs> stages of grief of League of Legends. We, we have please quit the game, no happy game, <laughs> please enjoy the game. It's like these are the three phases of my ranked solo queue life. Yeah, like, this is literally it is. But speaking of, um, and then in the middle of all that, in the mid lane, mm-hmm. we had Anthony Perella on the one trick of Aurelia. That being said, no Aurelia. Nope. Seen in this game. This Was time it banned? Though. No, it wasn't. I don't think so. Hmm. And then looking to move on for some uh, for mathematics in uh, U of T next year. So not only are they enjoying the esports side of things, but they have their focus towards their uh, post secondary education as yes. well, which is nice to see. And in tell hand, that is going to be no happy game. No happy game it doesn't exist. Has some interesting goals that I'm not quite going to share. <laughs> but that being said, you have goals nonetheless. Yes, everybody please, does. Please enjoy game. That's going to be Lazar uh, Javonik. Mm-hmm. And he believes that Zed should be removed from the game. See, okay. <laughs> How do you feel about that AD carry mate? <laughs> See, I agree that with like my AD carry heart, okay? And even my mid laner heart, because my mid <laughs> my mid lane champions like are specifically just um very squishy people, like glass cannons. That's the best way to put it. And then Zed just eats them. Yeah, Zed just kind of looks at me and I'm already dead. That's how that goes. <laughs> but I like Zed as a character. So. Um, fair enough. An iconic one, of course. Yes. Like Professional League of Legends and casting. One of the most, of course, iconic moments there with uh, Doa calling the faker play and whatnot. Yeah. Now, do you happen to have the HT uh, T1 side of things? So for the HTT1 side of things, for the top laner, we have Slapping Toads. Again, love the username. Slapping Toads. <laughs> Slapping <Let's go>. Toads. <laughs> His name is Jade... Or Jack... Or, oh my god, I have a friend named Jade Scott, sorry. <laughs> Jack <laughs> Scott. He is in grade 12, and he is the most selfless player. I mean, as the top laner, you oftentimes do get kind of put on some tanks. And I mean, you do. it would make sense if, if uh, he's the Cho'Gath in this situation. Yep. Um, and then for the jungle, we have Shrimperly, I believe is how you say Shrimperly? it. Shrimperly? Yes, Shrimperly. <laughs> right. um, Eon Smith, also grade 12. No game sense and former top 100 Rek'Sai NA. That's very interesting. How those two things kind of combined is beyond me, but I mean, that's well, still awesome. Rexa <laughs> is just a champion. She's Fun fact, she's the only champion who can go underground. Right. Technically. And then she, she loses vision. Yes. She loses vision, but she can see exactly where enemies are walking. Right. Footsteps and something yes. along those lines, right? And then for the mid laner, another great username, we have Rocket Pig 20 <laughs> Rocket Pig. When um, pigs fly, finally. Exactly. Um, I oh, uh, Martin Me- Mizak Mizak Mizak. I believe Mizak. you have it right. Yep. He is grade twelve. He can bench two fifty, squat four five or four oh five, and deadlift four oh five. That was what he wanted to let the world know. Well, then why isn't he playing with tank? My goodness. <laughs> and then there's also professional heroes of the storm player. That's oh, interesting. Okay, as someone who I'm guilty, this is going to sound terrible. Heroes of the storm oh, is actually no. my favorite MOBA. Mm-hmm. In terms of simplicity, yes, League is very like shout outs to pe- other more <laughs> shout outs to more people enjoying that game. Yeah. Underrated. <laughs> then we also have our ADC, whose user is Eugene, and his name is Elijah Lee. He is in grade nine, and his thing that he wanted to say was that League is a bad game. Oh no! Someone had a bad couple of solo queue games. I agree with him. <laughs> all right, <laughs> it's not very good. But then, for the, finally, for the support, we have Ape646. His name is Grant Swain. He is in grade 11, and he said, Auction's funny, and League of Legends is gross. <laughs> Again, all the statements I agree with. This, this love-hate relationship with League players. And then, I mean, I, I think if you stick around any game long enough, you start to see the, the negatives, and it kind of like oh, yeah, flourishes 100%. out a little bit. But nonetheless, though, it is bringing people together and awesome like competitive scenes and mm-hmm. even just casual scenes as well yeah but the other thing just 
you mentioned like liking Axon. Axon was instantly banned that game. So yeah. maybe the other team, the Falcons here, had a <laughs> had a inkling that that might have been the case. Maybe just a little bit. Maybe they. Maybe he plays a lot of it. Maybe he's like me and already has a million points on him. That's very very possible. Who Absolutely. knows? We weren't able to see any of the op or majority of the op op dot gg if I can talk, <laughs> but um. We are still, regardless, very excited for this gameplay. From what I've heard, it's a little bit lower ranked than what um, we normally see in Varsity. But nonetheless, it, we're in for some great content today. We're oh, very, absolutely. very excited. And I I'm, I can't wait. I'm, like, shaking because I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. And then, honestly, the I, I find the, the various gaps that we have. Because it's not like one team is just, like, full of, like, say, lower solo queue ranked players mm -hmm. it's oftentimes scenarios where you'll have maybe a couple silvers a couple golds and then you have that one plat player so it's like okay uh, everyone's like looking to that player for guidance yeah and, like they're learning off of each other and then of course solo queue versus actual team play still a very different dynamic and it's it own, is right so like <laughs> sure when we were looking at the opggs and whatnot a little bit earlier it did seem lower but that being said i still expect fireworks today oh yeah nonetheless <laughs> there there there's gonna be fireworks especially with the teams that we just saw like who they're playing and all there's gonna be a ton of fireworks if anything the lower the ranks tend to go the more fireworks end up actually happening right because yes. how many times have we seen like oh this is supposed to be top level league of legends and just it's just everybody sitting in lane being way too safe. It's like, no, oh, yeah. we want action. Exactly. We, I, we're going to get it today. <laughs> there's so many times where I'm casting League and I'm like, okay, it's been 10 minutes. So why hasn't there been a kill yet? I want to kill. <laughs> Come on. Like, let's go, boys. Okay. So, of course, it would not be a, a true Riot broadcast. Yes. If we did not get disconnected off the first time we'd, exactly. we try to hop into the game. So we'll be hopping in momentarily though but nonetheless though right around the corner now sure i gave the falcons praise based off of their composition based off of meta however yep. do you have anything to counteract you think that our void darlings plus a snake and a ezreal i don't know void or going mutants and tft is pretty good sometimes <laughs> Uh, nonetheless, Rek'Sai is a very, very good jungler right now. She is able to one-shot you when she does go lethality. Lethality, basically, no matter what kind of armor you have, it doesn't exist to her. Just like tears through armor like yep. it's nobody's business? Yes. It's a way that um, assassins can still do some damage, even if the enemy team does build a lot of armor. And with how squishy the enemy team is, or the falcons are squishy, meaning that they just don't have a lot of health. Yeah. I'm kind of expecting Rek'Sai to get a bunch of kills early. And isn't she supposed to be a tank? Like, isn't this always the problem? That makes she is supposed to be a bruiser, yes. They, they make something that's meant to, okay, help assassins in this case. Yep. It's like, oh, you know what? No, let's put it on a tank. Well, the way that it normally goes, um, you do the traditional build for whatever class they're uh, specified in. So, for example, with Lux... One of my yeah. other uh, main characters, you normally build AP on her. Right. But then, or sorry, I'm pretty sure she was actually made as a support, but then looking into things in Korea, they started to build her with a lot of damage, and then they're mm -hmm. like, ooh, you can, you can get some really nice kill from here. Okay, so we do seem to be having a little bit of technical problems on the side of the uh, lobby itself, so we are going to take ourselves a very, very quick five minutes just to figure this one out. Mm -hmm. But without further ado, Falcons versus HTTT1 should be starting right around the corner. Don't go anywhere. What's wrong with him?
destroyed. I believe. Um, so that just basically sends out a cone. Oh, that's got dirty. Oh, that's got so him. dirty. <laughs> Nami's going to come around the corner and they're both going to use everything possible. Lucy's going to try and use a Gale Force to try and pick it up, but Nami already got the kill. And we do see Ari in the mid lane trying to pick up this kill. <laughs> Ari wants to kill that cast. It that just, <laughs> yeah, just over and over, basically, just making yep. it so that like Cassiopeia can't get to that spot that there they drive is. in. This should seal the deal here. Not Ooh. quite, actually. Gonna hang on by a thread. Not gonna. Oh, they are actually kind of going past the turret. No. Um, Haraga Pig's just like, nope, none of that. I'm going all the way yeah. to my base. Even if I have to walk there myself. But Jeez. so far, just the. <laughs> not only just the amount of eliminations that we've been seeing across the board so far, mm -hmm. but looking at even level differences. Like, look at the jungle oh, difference yeah. here between Please Quit and uh, Shrimperly the nine compared to the seven mm -hmm. so one like when challenging that crab that we saw in the river your yep. smite does more damage so you're gonna win that yeah anytime they go down to one of these objectives now if it's up to a 50 50 smite fight it's not actually a 50 50 if uh these quit can keep that level difference between yep. himself and shrimperly it's very very intense for junglers to be able to keep either stay at the same level as the enemy or to be above them. That's one of my struggles whenever I do play jungle, but it does look like they're just going to try and pick up the Rift Herald. Ari's going to land the charm on the Rek'Sai and use all the oh abilities no. and completely one-shot the Rek'Sai before he's even able to dash out. Chaga is going to be blasted over the wall and Ari's going to pick up another kill as well as the Falcons are going to pick up the Rift Herald. Oh, I love this game. Low-key, I think they all... He almost got that. Oh, <laughs> if, yeah. If he would have, like, altered the Rift Herald, but... Yeah, he could have. <laughs> that would have been funny, but mm -hmm. not this time. Yeah, Choga's not in his late game phase yet, so he's not as tanky yet. That's the thankfully. first death on the side of uh, Slapping Toads mm -hmm. as well. He's been, for the most part, able to just keep those stacks, but now, unfortunately, losing the one life in that case is going to lose some health. Mm-hmm. Or at least a little while until you could build it back up. But that takes time. And if anything, we see that the Falcons out of, uh, of Toronto just not giving them the time. They're constantly in their face no. looking for fights. It's, they're playing it extremely well. They hard focus mid. And because of that, Cast doesn't have any damage. Lucian, though, it looks like the Rexa is going to go oh. in and use a Prowler's Claw in order to close out the damage or close out the gap. Then ulti in, try and get that last damage Ooh. off, and does pick up the shutdown. Uh, Cassiopeia is going to try and go in on the Darius here, but Darius pops Ghost and he's able to run out with no issues. Every This, oh, I'm so happy. This makes my heart happy. Think of it this way. It's about to be 16 minutes in the game. We've seen no death every minute. It, this game has definitely brought in no shortage of yeah. action, which is definitely nice to see. Mm -hmm. But in terms of how do you get out of this one, like this is kind of brutal in terms of the gold lead of course eliminations aren't necessarily everything if you're getting a bunch of yeah. last hits on minions getting objectives you can be very like tied even if the kills are off but mm -hmm. unfortunately here because of all these eliminations and ha the way that the uh, uh, toronto falcons here have been playing it's mm -hmm. just brutal you don't normally see close to a 10k gold lead at this point in no, the game and with a team that is so focused on 
like making it to that late game to then do your damage, it's going to be a little bit brutal. A good little dodge from Ape, but could not dodge the wave. Wow. Please enjoy the game. Going to finish the job there in that regard. That being said, though, the side of Holy Trinity trying to fight back. Slapping Toads is kind of in a pickle, but the beefiness of this Cho'Gath is still super effective. Hanging on for a little bit longer. The sleepy time, however, oh going to make things extremely difficult. Going to be the second elimination there for Slapping Toads, unfortunately for them. But on the side of Toronto, lots of crazy like KDAs yeah. in this regard. Six and one currently on the one trick Aurelia. Showing them maybe they're not necessarily just the one trick Aurelia in oh, this situation. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then please quit. Definitely standouts. Heck, even please enjoy the game. The fish there with three animations <laughs> for herself. Trust me, my <coughs> friend who's a Nami main at home, he is exactly like, please enjoy the game. Always going, um, uh, what's it called? Oh my god, Imperial. Um, Imperial mandate on Nami in order to get that extra damage. He purposely does it to KS people. <laughs> Fair enough in that regard. That being said, though, one Shrek Aurelia may be finding themselves a little bit pinched off, but if anything, some decent damage over the wall. Already popping the ult a little bit, so some dashes out of the pocket for now. Mm -hmm. And, okay, we're knocking on the base door, but this is where we've seen some teams kind of falter, right? Yeah. You're right outside the inhibitor turrets, and sometimes maybe you just kind of overstay your welcome. So I honestly like what uh, Toronto is doing right here. Just Okay, um, we're all the way through the door. <laughs> There's nothing else we can do right now. Let's go back. Let's get our items. Yeah. Spend the gold that we do have. Come back even stronger. Then maybe make this uh, lead we have even even bigger. Yeah, we do see that the Lilia and the Ari did pick up a Cosmic Drive. Cosmic Drives takes down the cooldown um, or um, the cooldown that you have for your ultimate, so they're able to use that. And I believe it does also still give movement speed on the ultimate whenever you do use it. It uh, looks like one trick Aurelia is going to possibly be caught out here, but she is going to walk away using that movement speed on her W. Oh Lucius no. is going to pick up a kill with no problem. Going to go in it, and Ari is going to pick up the charm on the Cassiopeia and get her out of the fight early. Uh, Lilia is going in on the wreck side here, trying to take him out, but it isn't able to because the Shrimply flashes over the wall. One trick Aurelia follows with the Ari ulti reset, is able to pick up that one more kill trying to survive as long as possible for the rest of his team to come up. Looks like Cho'Gath is going to be taken out with the Darius ulti. And... Oh, oh my <laughs> god! Okay. That... Very well played. Very, very, very well played by uh, Falcons. I mean, you're just that ahead that you can get away with that, but yep. that was still a fantastic play there from Anthony. You saw the Mystic shot coming out there from mm -hmm. Juan Chaos's, uh Ezreal. Flashes forward, getting the taunt as well. Yeah. You literally got touched by an auto attack in that situation. You go down, but yet you're able to make the dodge and just clean up that ace for your team. Mm -hmm. And now easily over 10k at this point, like going on more like 14 at this point. Mm -hmm. Just the side of the Falcons in the driver's seat for this first matchup. For sure. That's the thing with um, a lot of the abilities in the game. Some of them you can flash through them if they are a projectile, like the uh, Mystic Shot. Ari's actually going to go in here and land no another fear. charm. Is going to try and pick up the kill on Ezreal, but isn't able to. He's going to try and just use the ulti in order to get out. One Trick Irelia is out for blood. Yeah, no kidding. And I mean, this mobility definitely makes it like easier for them to actually pull this one off. However, might a bit off a little bit more than they can shoot here, mm -hmm. especially when silenced. I think that was the ult coming out of one chaos and it didn't even do that much damage necessarily oh my there. God. and we have essentially the entire goon squad coming through here <laughs> to try and take out this Ari, take out one trick Aurelia. and actually this could be the start of something though rocket pig does get the elimination on to please enjoy the game it was unfortunately just kind of uh, collateral damage in that exchange and with that big shutdown onto somebody who needs the gold that could have been like relatively major if they could hang on at least yes one thing to mention is the amount of abilities that Ari was able to put out, the one track I really was able to put out, to it, just to simply run away from everybody. Every single couple seconds, she was able to W and get that movement speed. Oh no. Lucia's gonna dash over the wall, flash the Cassiopeia ulti, and try and pick up the kill, but oh. she's not able to do it because of the Cho'Gath. Rex is gonna go in here on uh, one track Irelia. Lily is gonna pick up the kill and save the one track Irelia right before, on the br right on the brink of death. 
Okay, they called Slapping Toads the most selfless player. And I think we just kind of saw it there oh, with that yeah, show gap did. play. <laughs> Saving their poor snake, their poor uh, Cassiopeia right in the last possible second. Of course, saving the the ultimate, the big nom 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 to finish the <laughs> job there. Beautifully done. No happy game. Getting caught maybe a little bit cocky in this Just case. Just a little bit. Not necessarily the highest in regards to the eliminations, but while everybody else was getting eliminations on people, he was just farming minions, so he's still getting gold. Yeah. So he's still an extremely dangerous player in this regard. The big, big plays there from uh, Stopping Toad to be able to deny him. Now it's time for um, Please Quit the Game to try and go in to the base and keep them away. One Check Aurelia is, is going to walk up with Please Enjoy the Game and Please Quit the Game, and we'll see if they want to try and take the in hit. Togath looks like he's about to get called out here. Slapping Toads, he's definitely proving how uh -oh. selfless he is. Lilia's going to go in on the cast here. Not going to be okay. be able to do a lot of damage. Ari's trying to hold off the Chogath top lane. There's a lot of different things that are going on right now. I mean, this is actually really interesting here. The side of Toronto, has the Falcons, have been stuck outside this inhibitor these sun temperature turrets or this base in general for so long but they haven't actually really been able to get anything done and they haven't even been able to win like a really decisive team fight to get mm -hmm. any sort of damage done they finally kind of broke in here unfortunately here it's going to be slapping toads who is going to end up getting charmed out they're going to push on through but other than the inhibitor can they actually seal the deal here not quite sure they might try though they do have minions i believe that they close out the game here for sure renato's ulti is going to come through and see what kind of damage they can do here, Cass is going to get the ulti off, but isn't able to pick up a kill in time. Rek'Sai is going to try and go in on the Ari here, but is able to Zhonya's to avoid the damage. They're just looking to close out this game. There's nothing else to really say. We'll see if Lucian does pick up the quadra kill here, but I don't okay. think that's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I was just saying how the Lucian wasn't necessarily farming eliminations while well, it just kind of popped off no, in that one. No, the one oh, And there we go. This time, Ape is not going to have a goose egg in that elimination no. column. The turret coming in clutch to say the least there and actually is that enough damage to the point where they have to at least regroup for one more fight i feel like they will have to regroup for one more fight just because uh the one trick i really is like mainly their damage here lucian is very fed and so is lilia but it takes them a little bit longer to get all the damage out where ari can literally just walk up charm oh no i'm dead <laughs> yeah basically i mean if Rocket Pig can stay behind the tank line and just be safe, which is difficult because you have mm -hmm. like three characters on the side of uh, the Falcons who are just absolutely ready to dive. But we have started to see some okay damage start to come out from that Cassiopeia. Yes. So, like, get into a position where you can stay safe and just throw out damage. This fight, I feel like, could still actually be won. Looking at the gold, like, differences and whatnot. It would maybe suggest a little bit otherwise, but mm -hmm. I feel like there is still a way for TT1 to kind of sneak their way back into this one, but it's yeah, going to be sure. difficult. There is definitely um, a very good chance that they can come back into the game. Um, all they really have to do, they have to just try and wait until those inhibitors are back up so that then uh, Falcons can't infiltrate their base once again. But their main goal right here should be to try and get that Baron, if, the, if possible, while they're on Dragon. And if not, they should try and go into one of the lanes and see if they can pick up an objective bounty, because that gives a lot of gold. It gives a lot more than you think, so that would definitely help. Ari is just going to go in here, dashing around and trying to land a charm, isn't able to. We do see the ulti coming through for Lilia, so two, two people are going to be put to sleep. Oh. The Lilia damage on the Ezreal there. Oh able my to pick goodness. Up three kills with one ability. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Un unfortunately, they're for the side of TT1. Falcons just did exactly what they needed to. They knew yeah. that TT1 and Ho or Holy Trinity wanted to try and get up some more minions and get themselves back into this game. But because of that, their tank line was split from the rest of their team. And slowly but surely, we see the Nexus falling. A little bit of the standard oh, no. dance outside the Falcon. Maybe get a couple extra. <laughs> Yuji going to take a tower dive and just <laughs> tank for the rest of the squad. And just like that, our first round Robin game is going to be going over to the Falcons. Yes, it is. Wow, that was a game. That was, that, <laughs> that was a, way a to very, start the very intense game. Um, well played, <laughs> Very well played by both sides of the um, game. Falcons, they, <laughs> they were not messing around. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. Toronto District just absolutely playing that, that entire matchup mm -hmm. to a T. They, like, whether it was a heavy, aggressive intention off the start 
we're not maybe 100 percent sure of however that basically like if that close to hard countered basically yes. what uh, the side of holy trinity was going for which in against certain styles what holy trinity had would have been absolutely wonderful mm-hmm. like just sit back play safe and whatnot however just the never lift off the gas just go go always be oh, in their yeah. face style coming out there from it, it's Toronto my district kind of, it's my kind of style that's that's what I like to do. I like to just, hey, look, there's two people there. I'm just by myself. You know what? Screw it. I'm going in. <laughs> yes, the, the true Jinx main coming out, of course. But uh, <laughs> with that, we still have plenty more action here yes. in the off-sea uh, provincial tournament. Like More high schools coming to compete. Next matchup is going to be 11 o'clock, so we only have about... 10 minutes, I think, okay. before we get to the next one. LPI versus Liz Kodiaks going to be up next. So be sure to stick around. We'll be right back with some more.